We're underneath the hood of our 1968 138 code, which meant that it started life as a real super sport, Chevelle, hardtop. Uh, it was a 396 to begin life at this point. It has a 350 small block in it, has a wind aluminum intake manifold, a uh, AFB uh, Carter carburetor on it, a set of long tube headers that appear to be about inch and five eighths, has a new alternator, it has power steering, it does not have power brakes, it does have a dual stage uh, master cylinder, however, has a set of uh, uh, Moroso uh, aluminum finned uh, valve pan covers though, has a flex fan, flat fan shroud, high capacity wide uh, GM radiator in the front, brand new battery with a shut off on it too, that's a nice feature to have on them. Nice, nice, nice looking car. Uh, fender wells on the inside are semi flat black the way they should be. The uh, engine compartment is very clean. Appears to have a new water pump on it. The motor's fresh. The gaskets on it are all fresh. It does have a chrome timing chain cover on it. Nice looking car under the engine compartment here. Very, very nice. Very straight. New plug wires. New vacuum diaphragm on the uh, distributor, which appears to be freshened up. It appears to be fairly new. The aluminum on it. It's a nice, fresh engine compartment. It's a, it's a good looking car. Uh, Nice representation under the hood here with a small block in it now in place of the 396 that this came with. So let's go around the outside see what we can find. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today we're going to present to you a 1968 Chevelle 138 code car. It did start life as a 396, but at this point it has a small block on it, a 350. So. We're going to present it to you. We're going to go over it together. This is the first time I'm looking at it too. We just got the car in. Uh, it just got washed and cleaned, vacuumed out, and we're going to present it to you and see what deficiencies we can find, if any, and we're going to address the ones that we can here. Uh, hopefully we don't miss anything. We do our very best to bring out every flaw that we find in the car within reason. These are not new Ferraris or they're not new Porsche 911. So they weren't that to begin with. Uh, we try to present them as well as we can. We encourage everyone to jump on a plane and come down here. Plane fare, it's especially this time of year, September on, is relatively inexpensive. So we encourage everyone to come down, look at the vehicles, drive them, see them on a rack. We can present them to you in person. That way you know exactly what you're buying, but we're going to make every attempt to go over this and show you what we have now. So let's get started. Okay, it does have the correct SS hood on it. The paint on the hood is very nice. I really don't see any imperfections in it. The alignment is gorgeous on it. About an eighth of an inch the whole way around. It sounds repetitive, but the ones we've been hitting lately between Camaros, Chevelles, and Roadrunners have been really spot on. They've been really nice fit and finish. Nice stone hood for it. The chrome uh, vents in the rear of the uh, scoops are very, very clean. Brand new chrome on them. It doesn't look like there's any pitting or any uh, uh, patina whatsoever on it. And again, you know, the finish itself is just absolutely gorgeous. The nice deep red finish. Chevelle designation on the front. SS on the grill. Plastic grill is just as nice as it could possibly be trim around it. The anodized aluminum is really sweet. No dents, no marks. Basils around the headlights. Really, really nice. Trim at the bottom of the uh, face panel here is nice. Same thing with the basils on this side. Chrome on the bumper. Really, really nice. Front bumper fitment will not ever be any better than it is at this point. It is absolutely spot on. Laterally and height wise. It, it just fits absolutely as it should. Amber parking lights in it. Chrome on the front bumper is very nice everywhere. No bang marks or uh, dents or chips or anything from stones being thrown up through the years. Very nice front end on this car. I really don't see absolutely anything that I can tell you is a miss on the front of this car. Let's go down the driver's side see if there's anything there for you. Okay, down the driver's side of our 138 code SS396 car. 
396 designation with the side marker light just the way it should be for 1968. And this should be painted flat black, semi-flat black along the bottom and this nose here. Again, personal preference. The person that did this car decided he liked it all red as opposed to being painted black. If it were an issue, we could always address it by painting it semi-flat black for you. Fender lips, really nice. No marks, dings or anything, door opening uh, dings on this one. Look at how this hood fits. This thing's absolutely gorgeous, the way it fits. The front fender, the door, the fitment is absolutely gorgeous on this car. It does have a set of uh, Krager SS uh, wheels on it, chrome, that really give it a nice pop, and they would be era correct also for this. 1968, 789, if you would have bought this car, the first thing you would have done is rush out and put a set of these or Keystones or uh, American Torque Thrusts on it. This person chose Krager SS as a good choice. Ten front windshield, correct arms and blades for this car. Trim around the front windshield, really nice. There's a little tiny ding here. Somewhere through the years, a stone came up and went bingy and got it. But correct mirror for 1968. Roof is just glass smooth. There's absolutely no imperfections, no waves, no dings, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Drip grill molding, something rough right there. It's really not a dent. It looks like something, I don't know. I can fill up my finger, you can't see it. A couple little marks along the side here. It appears that something had fallen against it a couple times, but that's it. The uh, window wipes appear to be original and they're still in great condition too. They don't need to be replaced. The original door handles also, they're in really nice condition. A little tiny bit of patina on them, you can hardly see it though. If you can't feel it, you can just barely see it. Again, look at the door fitment, look. I'm not going to find much better than that. That's as sweet as it can be. Sail panel, uh, there's no marks or anything, there's no indication as to where the quarter had been uh, put on with the roof. Someone did a very nice job with this, finishing this car. Trim along the bottom absolutely is gorgeous too. Wheel lip in the back, really great. Nice sharp tin. Quarter panel is very, very nice on the car. I don't see any marks or dents or deviations whatsoever. Trim around the uh, back window. Very nice on this side. A set of aftermarket speakers in the uh, hatch shelf, rear shelf. Uh, the shelf itself is absolutely the way it was when it was new. You could not ask for a better condition shelf than that one is. Driver's side is as nice as you're going to find one of these vehicles. It's, uh, it is all tin. doesn't uh, appear to have any Bondo or any filler in it anywhere. Laser straight down the sides. The, the door fitment to the fender to the rear quarter panel. Uh, everything on this car is really exemplary. It's really, really nice. Rubber around the uh, wings is original rubber yet. It's beginning to dry out. It's showing its age, but it's certainly nothing that needs replaced. Must have a uh, tinted glass on the sides too. It, that appears to be tinted and so does the rear glass also. So nice driver's side. Let's see what we can find on the back. Okay, the rear end of our 68 Chevelle. Again, the rear deck mimics the front, the hood. Uh, just a beautiful fitment of it, about an eighth of an inch the whole way around. Again, finished the same way. The car just has an absolutely gorgeous finish to it. There were no marks or chips or dings or anything along the driver's side. And I don't see anything whatsoever on here. Uh, you can blow up the uh, photos all you want. I don't think you're going to see any marks or, or scuffs. I don't see anything going over this. Tail lights appear to be original. The chrome around them is very, very nice condition. A little, couple little tiny pits there, but certainly nothing that you would ever replace. This is flat black the way it should be. Uh, on the back end of the car, SS396 designation again. Again, a couple little tiny, tiny, again, you won't see it in the, in the video or in the films, but it's there. Certainly would not replace it. It's originality. The lenses are very nice and clean and clear. 
bumper fitment in the back the same way as it was up front. Somebody spent some time putting this puppy together. This thing's as nice a fitting bumper as you'd ever, ever hope to find on a Chevelle. The chrome is just absolutely a foot deep in it. Backup lights, the lenses are crystal clear on it. Two turn down uh, extensions. Beautiful back end on this car. Very, very nice back end. Chevelle designation. There's absolutely nothing so far. I mean, I have not found a thing so far. Let's try the uh, passenger side to see what's there. Okay, up the passenger side of our 138 uh, Chevelle. Quarter panel, just like the other one. Nice sharp. Cell panel, no marks, no indication that it's ever been put together. Trim around the uh, rear light, same way as the other side. Just absolutely beautiful. Fitment is very, very nice on this car. Again, the roof, you know, the roof's the roof. There's no marks whatsoever. Trim around the uh, right rear. A, a couple little tiny vertebrae to fall against it again, maybe. That's about it. Certainly nothing that you'd uh, uh, replace this for. You really have to look to see it. These indications of, of uh, defects that I'm showing you are there. You're probably not going to see them. You've got to really look to see them. Wipes, whiskers, again, original and don't need replaced. As nice as could be. Another original door handle here. You see the chrome has age, but it's, it's not worn out by any figment of the imagination, and it's something you would never address or replace. Absolutely not. Again, quarter to the uh, door. Wow. I've been really locking out on these cars lately. Jesus. I can't believe how nice the fit them is. <clears throat> Again, some age to this uh, rubber around the wing, but the important thing is the uh, chrome isn't deteriorated around either side, so um, it, I, it, you just definitely leave it alone. Trim around the window, the same as the other side. There's no dings or marks or chips in the window either. Forgot to mention where the dashboard transitions to the base of the windshield. Generally, you'll find that these things through the years have accumulated some dirt and some, you know, they're just, they, they show some wear and some age. This one shows absolutely none. Someone has kept this car absolutely positively as clean as you could possibly ever keep one. Uh, it does have the original paint on the dash yet. Very, very clean car. Very clean car. Front part of the door to the uh, front fender. Again, spot on. Same with the hood. Just absolutely spot on. The fourth wheel lift molding and still no defects, no marks. 396 designation again. Krager SS wheels add a lot of pop to this vehicle. Uh, it's a great looking car. It looks like an SS 396 because it is. Uh, it does at this point have a small block in it does have a cam in it, a set of headers, and an intake, and a carburetor. So horsepower-wise, this thing's probably at least the same as a 350 horse uh, 396. So you got 150 pounds less weight and about the same horsepower. It's a 396 in every sense of the words, except for the engine. I won't tell if you don't. And uh, it presents itself as an SS396. The only thing non-original would be the black along the bottom, which could be added. Again, personal preference. Other than that, I certainly wouldn't change the wheels or anything else on this vehicle. It's a great looking car. I didn't find a single stone chip, not a mark, not a scuff. Jump on a bird, come down and take a look at this car because you'll fall in love with it. We're going to do the interior. Well, we're in our 68 SS396 Chevelle. Obviously a black interior, but a really, really nice car. The dashboard is nice and resilient yet. It's original dash. It has not been replaced. The gauges are clean and clear. It does have a gauge package in it, so it does have the fuel uh, uh, level, the amp, the temp, and the uh, oil pressure uh, gauges, but it also has a trident of uh, 
uh, gauge is underneath the dash, oil pressure, temp, and uh, amp gauges. So we'll see what works once we take it for a ride. It has an aftermarket radio that fits in the uh, spot where the original radiator was, a radiator, radio was housed. And uh, it fits nicely, it looks good. This is the key to the whole operation. It is a four speed. Very, very pos positive, positive add to this vehicle is having a four speed transmission with any Chevelle or Camaro. Headliner just as nice and tight as a drum as it should be. We already went over the hat rack. It's as nice as you'd ever find. The rear seats, the front seats all match the way they should upholstery wise. It appears to have been all replaced with new material. Floors, new carpeting in it, nice and black and, and uh, full the way it should be. No wear whatsoever. Door panels in the front are new. The cranks and the handles are the originals yet. You can see how they've turned yellow through the years. And that's an indication that they are the original ones, not the uh, crystal clear plastic on them at this point. Original sun visors. Little tiny bit of patina on the rear view mirror here. Originality, you certainly wouldn't replace it. It's just on the outer edge, very, very light. Aftermarket steering wheel in it. Again, the chrome on the wing uh, sections here, the wing supports, very, very nice on both sides. Uh, important uh, feature to look for in these vehicles. It does have seat belts in the front. I don't see them in the rear, but that doesn't mean they're not tucked in behind the seats there somewhere. This car is a really, really nice, clean car with a four-speed and a small block in a 396, 138 code uh, chassis. So you got the best of everything and a lighter front end and just as much power. This car is very nominally priced and it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. We encourage you to come down and take a look at it. If you can't, go over our video. We're going to try to point out as much as we possibly can. Uh, Devin and I are going to go for a ride in it. We're going to do a presentation of how it runs and an undercarriage presentation for you also. But this is the interior, and it's spot on, just as the exterior was that we had just done. Hangsters, Daytona Beach. Take a look at it. Go in here. Let's see what we got working and what we don't. We have gauges that are definitely functioning. Temperature's coming up. We've had it running, so temperature's operating temperature. Amp gauge is working, and the oil pressure is also working. Uh, the quadrant gauges from the factory, fuel gauge is working, shows that we have half tank. Uh, these other gauges are not simply because they've been transferred down to here. Clock isn't working. Radio. Radio is working. Wipers. Oh, that's the lights. Wipers are working. Horn is not working. <clears throat> Turn signal left is functioning. Turn signal right is functioning as it should. So we got a nice sound of Chevelle here. Let's take it for a ride and see what this thing does. solid, no hands, on straight, let's try brakes, no hands, see what happens. We'll back down to the second gear here. Our 1968 138 code red Chevelle. 
uh, a real super sport car, but at this point of its life, it has a 350 horse, 350 inch Chevy in it, as opposed to a 396. So let's see what we can find here. Set of newer shocks in the front, uh, drum brakes, thin, uh, thin brakes on the front, heavy duty sway bar the way it would be for a 396 car. You can see no leaks on the engine whatsoever, absolutely none. Uh, the ball joints look like they're a newer set of ball joints on it. Tie rod ends are nice and tight looking. They're they're not all they're they're well greased. They're they're in good shape. Oil's been changed lately. No drips on the bell housing. No drips off the transmission. Has a long tube set of headers on it. Looks like about inch and five eighths headers. Somebody got a little close to the uh, ground on this set here. Scrunched them up a little tiny bit. Didn't rip them open or anything, but it is caved in just a tiny bit there. I'm sure it doesn't affect the performance at all compared to the standard manifolds that were on this vehicle to begin with. Front springs are nice and heavy duty, uh, big block springs as they were, uh, new. The uh, full perimeter frame in the front transitions onto a C-channel frame that uh, goes from front to back. That section of the frame is really, really nice. I mean, it, it doesn't have any marks or, or deterioration whatsoever. 3-inch set of collectors going into 2.5-inch uh, pipes in an H-pipe configuration that gives you a little bit more horsepower. Cast iron 4-speed in this. Apparently it must be a Borg Warner, early Borg Warner tranny in it, but it is a 4-speed. It does shift well. No leaks on it. Uh, just a real nice uh, solid drive line in this car. The structural support that goes uh, across and holds the rear of the transmission is really nice in it. It's not uh, deteriorated or rusted or corroded in any way. Original brake lines from front to back, they look like they're totally undisturbed and as they were from 1968 yet. And uh, fuel line the same way. Curved around the frame sections and everything just the way it was. 3 8 inch, designated for a big block. Does have a parking brake assembly that still appears to be functional and original also. It, uh, it's not deteriorated in any way. The floor pans are the original pans in this. There's no question that they are. And they're not uh, disturbed or deteriorated at all. Uh, the um, structural supports that are underneath the uh, floor pans themselves are really nice. No one has made an attempt to jack it up on those sections through the years, thank God. Uh, the frame itself, the seat channel along the back, there's a mark there from a jack stand, another one here, a couple there, and another one there. So through the years, someone has either jacked it up along that section of frame, as opposed to the front or the back. I don't know why they would do it in the center, trying to pick it up all at one time, I guess, but not the appropriate way of doing it, but it didn't hurt anything structurally. It's there, it could be straightened out, it doesn't need to be. It's not compromising it in any way. Again, these floor pans are absolutely gorgeous. They're hard to believe that they are the original pans, but they are. There's no question. They're just totally undisturbed from the day it was new. Um, I, that's half the way through the car, and I don't see anything at all amiss on this thing. Let's see what's on the other half. Okay, our two and a half inch uh, galvanized uh, pipes transition into two Flowmaster mufflers. Uh, also brand new. You can see this entire exhaust system is brand new on this vehicle. Also, if you look, you'll see there are no leaks, even on the tail shaft of this transmission. It does appear to have a Hurst shifter on it, however, and everything looks uh, the way it, sh it should. I mean, it's a nice, uh, solid-looking car right there. The full box framed in the back, transitions up over the uh, uh, rear axle in this vehicle, which is a 12-volt Chevy, the way it would have come for a 396 car in 1968. Two and a quarter, I'm going to say. I'm going to guess it does. Two and a quarter inch pipes coming out of the Flowmasters and going down to two turndowns right at the uh, base of the uh, rear bumper. The swing arm assemblies aren't torsionally twisted or compromised in any way. They're not bent or, thankfully, no one's tried to jack anything up on them. Uh, they're really, really nice condition. A set of air shocks in the back that appear to be almost as new. Pin drums in the back to, to complement the ones up front. Original gas tank in this vehicle also. 
It uh, didn't need to be replaced, judging from the condition of the rest of the vehicle under here. I can see why. I mean, the whole car is just as nice and straight and clean as you'd ever want. There's no sections of deterioration whatsoever on the frame sections in the back where they go to the rear cross member, which doesn't have any pull marks or anything on it. This car is very nice under here. Very nice. The drop downs and the uh, quarter panels on each side are original and just as nice as you'd ever want to have. Pinch welds still evident on them. Springs in the back are nice and fat yet and nice and tall. It doesn't let the car sag at all. I'll tell you what, this is a nice uh, original um, 138 code 396 uh, 68 Chevelle as you could ever hope to find underneath. The originality stands on itself, you know, that, that it hadn't been replaced or repaired with any uh, uh, other panels. This is all original underneath this vehicle and nothing needs to be replaced. It's a great looking car underneath and you can buy it here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida.